Hello, welcome to your first lecture in the Origins of Rock and Roll series. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this, you know how to get to Google Classroom by this point. So you're in Google Classroom. Up at the top, you're going to hit Classwork and then Class Drive folder in the upper right. It's loading a little slow for me today. We'll see how we fare. All right. Excuse me. All right, you're going to go to your Origins of Rock and Roll folder down here at the bottom. And you're going to click on it. Say a little prayer. Okay, there we go. All right, so there are five different little micro units within this Origins of Rock um, broader unit. We are starting with spirituals. They are not in the correct order in this file. So make sure you're listening to what I'm saying and not just clicking the first one. So go to spirituals, open that PDF. Now you're going to want to read this and jot notes in the margins and whatnot. Um, well, not in the margins because it's a PDF, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Jot notes on some paper um, to accompany this. If you want to print it, if you have that available to you and jot some notes, that'd be great, but you don't need to, obviously. All right. I'm going to sort of read this and pontificate a little bit and elaborate. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, obviously, the first sentence doesn't make total sense because we skipped the early music unit, as I mentioned in a previous video. So I'm just going to go ahead and go. While most of the music we have studied so far happened in Europe, the origins of rock and roll are deeply tied to American history. People were abducted from several different regions of the African West Coast and forced into ships. The horrific treatment of the African people as they were torn from their families and chained in the bottom of ships cannot be expressed enough in a paper or PDF handout. A large percentage of people didn't even survive the horrifying conditions and rampant disease during the two months or more to cross the Atlantic, and those who did survive were treated appallingly. Now, this bit here, in one paragraph of black and white text, you cannot even begin to get the full picture of how awful the slave trade, the abducting of people, the flat out knowing that a huge amount of the people on the boat weren't even going to make it, but that was just the cost of doing business at the time. Like, that's just, like, mind-blowing. Um, yeah, and you also you have different cultures that the, 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 blah, 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 the word vomit, the diseases have evolved in such a way on different continents at this point because there wasn't a ton of, you know, interaction between these cultures. Um, so you have diseases that one group maybe has antibodies to that another, another doesn't. And you see this all throughout um, when we start going on ships and going to different parts of the world, large amounts of people dying from disease. So you have these people strapped, chain, not even strapped, chained into boats, right? Shoulder to shoulder, crammed underneath, no ventilation, no air conditioning. Um, again, you don't even speak the same language as your captors. You don't know what's going on. You've just been ripped away from your family and your home. Um, absolutely horrifying. And when you're in those close quarters and the sanitary, oh, I can't even imagine the smell, the the, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Um, but disease is going to spread widely in those, in those settings. And, um, so a huge amount of the, the people that were kidnapped to become slaves didn't even make it across the ocean. Um, but I digress because unfortunately we have to move on. You could do an entire class just on the subject of slavery in the world because it's, yeah, not exactly a light topic. Um, so once in North America, life wasn't much better. People were bought and sold like cattle, beaten or whipped if they didn't comply with every wish, and forced to work back-breaking jobs from sunup until sundown. They had no rights, and they had no voice. In most cases, none of the slaves could read or write. Um, in most cases, if they were caught trying to read or write, especially if it was an old language, if they even spoke in their old language, um, they'd be beaten. If they were caught with books... You know, like, they would be punished. Um, in most cases, none of the slaves could read or write in English. Um, they were forced to become Christians, and soon the old names, beliefs, languages, and traditions of Africa faded away over the generations. If you're not allowed to do something, your children never learn it. And by the time those people passed away that knew the old traditions, they were lost. Um, and... Um, you know, that's just so sad because 
part part of being an American oftentimes is you're honoring, you know, your heritage, you know, whether that be, you know, Native American or Irish or whatever. But if you if your family was kidnapped and brought here, you know, how would you even know what part of Africa, you know, your family was from or any traditions or songs or, you know, things you do around the holidays or whatever it is that is is important to your family. Imagine losing all of that. Um, let's see, where was I here? Oh, most slaveholders did not allow dancing or drumming. So here's where we kind of get into the ties into music, right? Um, the old dances and the, the African drumming that was a huge part of African tradition faded away, you know? Um, as a result, the enslaved people would sometimes meet in secret to share in one another's pain and hope. So sometimes in secret, they would, they would do a little singing or dancing. And over time, the, the songs would be in English because that after, you know, a couple hundred years, that was, that was the norm, um, for all of these, these folks forced into this. Um, they would listen to preachers and sing songs of sorrow, celebration, hope, and sometimes escape. The songs written at this time are now known as spirituals. These collections of songs are often also called code songs, sorrow songs, slave songs, etc. The lyrics of spirituals were tightly linked with the lives of their authors. While some related to their daily work, spirituals were inspired by the message of Jesus Christ and his good news of the Bible. You can be saved. Now, there's a ton of symbolism in spirituals. And often, you know, keep in mind, these folks were forced to convert to Christianity and they were forbidden from previous religions of Western Africa. So, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to sit here and like speculate, you know, what people thought or felt a hundred percent. Um, but I can infer just, you know, from being a, a fellow human that, um, you know, that there was a, a ton of resentment, but also that they eventually did take parts of that Christian faith to heart. You know what I mean? Because if it's all you know, and you're not allowed to read or write, and it's all you're allowed to know, how could you not, you know? So I feel like it was kind of a double-edged sword. Like, I'm sure there was an enormous amount of resentment, but also a little bit of comfort that kind of came with it. Because in the songs, we'll, you'll see um, uh, symbolism of the promised land or whatever. And maybe in the Bible, the promised land they're referring to in a passage or whatever might have been, you know, somewhere like a paradise. Like maybe it was the Garden of Eden or uh, Israel or whatever. Um, but oftentimes in spirituals, we see singing about the promised land, but often they're singing about freedom or freedom in the north in this scenario. So sometimes we start to see this like they're singing about the Bible and the slave owners are like, hey, they're singing about the Bible. Good on us. And they don't realize like they are, but there's like another layer to it. And that's where you get into like code songs. And um, and that's where this stuff really gets interesting. So um, these songs are different from hymns and psalms because they were a way of sharing and commiserating about the hard conditions of being a slave. These songs and melodies were passed down from generation to generation by rote. And if you're not sure, rote is when you teach a song just by um, modeling it and then copying it. Like, for example, all of you probably know Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, right? Maybe someone sang it to you when you're little. You didn't learn that by sitting down typically and like reading the sheet music. You learned it by copying someone who sang it to you, okay? That's what learning by rote is, R-O-T-E. Uh, many slaves in towns and on plantations tried to escape to freedom, and that freedom was often referred to as my home or sweet Canaan, the promised land. Again, using those biblical um, symbols to symbolize the freedom that they wanted to either find or hoped for someday. Um, the Ohio River separated the southern from the northern side of the United States, and that river was often referred to as the River Jordan from the Bible. So in the song, they'd be singing about the River Jordan. Um, rivers are very prominent in Bible symbolism, if you're, if you're unaware of that. Um, baptism tends to happen in rivers. You know, Jesus was baptized in a river, right? So rivers uh, is like a reoccurring theme. But in this case, they're singing about a river, but they're more alluding to the fact of crossing the River Jordan, which is the Ohio River, going into freedom in the north. Um, let's see. 
Okay, some spirituals also refer to the Underground Railroad, a secret organization for helping slaves escape to freedom. Ooh, tongue tied. A secret organization for helping slaves escape to freedom. Now, um, I'm sure some of you know, but maybe not all of you, the Underground Railroad is not an actual railroad. It's a series of hiding places and safe houses um, that people would zigzag to going from one house or one location to another um, at night under the cover of darkness um, to work your way slowly north. And as far as I know, there are actually a couple underground railroad locations in this area. I've never actually been. I think there's one in Albany, Ohio. Um, it's pretty cool. I need to go check that out sometime. Um, <clears throat> but um, a lot of folks risk a lot to hide people um, because if you were caught, you paid dearly. You know, um, there are instances of people who were caught, you know, losing a toe, they would cut off their toe um, or a finger, or they'd whip them or beat them, or the, or the worst of all was they might separate their families and sell them away so they'd never see them again. Imagine having your children like taken and sold to another, you know, another owner, like just, I, I can't even imagine. Um, so one of the most famous people associated with the Underground Railroad is Harriet Tubman. And she not only helped hundreds of people escape to freedom, and escaped herself, by the way. But she helped the Union Army to win the Civil War by acting as a spy and a scout. How cool is that? Especially since back in those days, women, especially women of color, were not really involved in like military decisions or um, anything like that. So I've always thought she was just such a cool lady. Um, I had her biography as a kid and I always liked reading that. Um, she also helped to fight for the women's right to vote but she died in 1913 before seeing the 19th Amendment certified in 1920, which is what officially gave women the uh, constitutional right to vote. Um, the Underground Railroad helped slaves to escape slavery in the South by traveling North. Many lyrics line up symbolically with their escape. When possible, people walked or waded through bodies of water to confuse the noses of scent tracking dogs. And one of the songs we're gonna listen to in this unit is called Wade in the Water. And if you're just listening to it, you might think, oh, it's a song about like baptism. But really there's like a secret coded message in there, which is when you're escaping, wade through the water. It makes it tougher for them to track you. Um, that's one of my favorites that has like the code in it. Um, people also jumped into wagons or chariots where they could hide and ride to the next point in the Underground Railroad. Swing Low Sweet Chariot, also on this list we're gonna get to. Um, those caught trying to escape would be horribly punished in the form of beatings, mutilation, or the selling and separating of families. In 1863, the Emancipation Proc Proclamation came into law, signed by Abe Lincoln, and freed American slaves on paper, but it took until June 19, 1865, so two years later, for this to be implemented in all of the U.S., ending with Texas. This freedom holiday, often called Juneteenth for June 19th, um, is in celebration of the actual end of slavery. There was the on paper end of slavery, and then there was the actual end of slavery, which took around two years for the whole country to get on the same page um, and comply with that. Um, celebrations for Juneteenth um, can involve uh, reading of the proclamation, singing spirituals, some of which we're going to talk about here in a minute, um, playing baseball, having picnics, family reunions, a lot of the same activities, you know, that the 4th of July contains, you know, when it comes to picnics and families and things, uh, but more of an emphasis on that freedom that finally came on June 19th, 1865. Okay, so that's all for the lecture part. So what I'm going to need you guys to do is get a, uh, a separate Google Doc. We're trying to get some software that you can edit these PDFs in like type in them, we're not quite there yet. So for now, I'm gonna have you just open a separate uh, Google Doc, title it with your name, put like Bob Smith, spirituals, excuse me. And you're gonna do these definitions, Emancipation Proclamation, spirituals, Underground Railroad, Juneteenth. And you also need to know who this is in this photograph. I'll give you a clue. It's Harriet Tubman, she's so cool. So make sure if you saw a picture of Harriet Tubman on a quiz, wink, because that's going to happen, wink, that you know who that is, okay? All right, now down here we have what are called listening jots. So in another tab, you're going to pull up your Spotify. I've got mine right here. Oh, I'm going to drag my little face over here. Okay, so remember you have to search Julia Brewer Olson if you haven't added all these playlists. You can do that if you would like. 
you don't need to. You can search my name every time. That's fine. It's all up to you. Um, and I'm going to scroll down in my playlists here. I made this a long time ago. And I'm going to go to Origins. Now, all five of those Origin units are on the same list, so you just have to pay attention so you don't listen to too many things. All right, and these first four songs on this Spotify playlist are our spiritual examples. So what you're going to do is you're going to listen to these songs. So like number one here is Wade in the Water. Now you might be like, why does it say spiritual each time? That's because typically in this class we put title and then the artist. But because these songs were passed down through the generations by rote, we don't actually know who wrote them. It could have even been a group of people that kind of collectively wrote it. That's probably honestly what it was and it evolved over the generations. Um, so for this quiz, when these examples are are on your quiz, you just need to know that it's a spiritual. You don't need to know it was written by, you know, whatever the name is. Um, now for the rest of the class, for the most part, there's a couple other times where that happens, but for the most part, you do need to know the artist also. For spirituals, you do not need to know that. So you're gonna listen to Wade in the Water on Spotify in your other tab, okay? Get that crank in. <clears throat> Okay, you're going to listen to the whole thing. It's not a long song. Um, in fact, most of these songs are pretty short. One of them is less than two minutes, as you can see here. So you're going to listen to the whole song. And then you're going to write underneath this listening jot, what, like, when you hear that, what do you think of? What sticks out? Like, for instance, it starts with people singing, waiting in the water, waiting in the water. And they do that the whole time. Now, in music, we call that an ostinato. I don't expect you to know that, but that's just where you repeat something under a song the whole time. And I think it's to symbolize the moving river, right? So you could put repeats wading in the water underneath in a male voice. You could put, there's a drum. You could put, they sing the name of the title immediately. You could put men and women singing. You could put blah, 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 blah. And you see where I'm going. It doesn't need to be full sentences. It can be just little bullet points. That's why they're called listening jots, okay? And then you're going to listen to the next one, do the jot. Now, you're going to have to do these in that separate doc. Okay, so you have to type Wade in the Water, Spiritual, and then your, your notes. Okay, you're going to do that for all four, and it's the first four songs on this playlist. And then you're going to stop. Don't go on to Crazy Blues because that's our next unit. All right. Um, on the bottom of this PDF here, I also have some photos. Again, you can never sum up over 200 years of atrocities in... Why is it highlighted? I can't unhighlight. Oh no. What have I done? Okay, I'm going to refresh. Stick with me, guys. I know this goes long. I just, there's so much to talk about. I hope you've stuck with me this far. I believe in you. I believe in you guys. You can do it. We're trying again. We don't give up. We ain't quitters. My mama didn't raise no quitter. Okay. Wonderful. And we're scrolling. Okay, wonderful. So here um, we have some photographs. Again, you could do a whole class just on American slavery and all of that. Uh, here are just a few photos I found. Um, again, you can look at your own doc and zoom in more, but um, this is a, a drawing representation of um, people being stolen from Africa. And you can see here, they've got them in chains and like yoked together. Um, Here's someone being beaten right here. Um, here's a photo of someone in, in chains and shackles. Um, this drawing is kind of hard to see, but if you can believe it, that is what it looked like in the slave ship. So this is the underbelly of the ship, and these are all the people packed in shoulder to shoulder to shoulder for that two months of absolute, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Disease, filth. I can't even imagine how hot it was. <sighs> Absolutely terrifying, horrifying. So that's what that photograph represents. Uh, we have a very famous picture here of a, a man covered in scar tissue because he's been beaten so much. Um, here is a uh, drawing of a family being sold at auction like animals. Um, here is a home on a plantation of a family of slaves. And you can see here, it's just a very simple wood home. Um, often you'd have many, many people living in one small area. Um, sharing beds, especially if you had kids, you know, the kids would all be sharing beds. Um, no modern convenience whatsoever. 
And uh, over here, we have a photograph from cotton fields, uh, people working all day in the hot sun picking cotton. So, um, again, it can't all be summed up, you know, in, in one little lecture. Um, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of what I've read and learned over the years. Um, but the music that came out of these spirituals is still being sung. I bet you'll recognize at least one of the songs on this list, if not two. Um, I think you'll all recognize Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. So um, hopefully you enjoy the songs. Please listen to them in their entirety. Do those jots and those um, vocab. And make sure your name is on the document in the, in the, at the top. Don't just leave it as untitled. Go ahead and change it. And then share that document with me for week two. And don't forget to do your birthday stuff as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.